Hello world, it's John from Sparkbox yet again with the final video from our series on automated accessibility testing. In the previous videos, we talked about two tools, Axe, which is a tool to help you identify accessibility issues on your site, and Cypress, which is an automated testing tool that allows you to test your site from the perspective of a user. We also talked about how we can combine these tools together to automate accessibility testing across an entire site. In this video, we'll talk about how we can improve the output of our accessibility tests to provide more details on accessibility issues. So previously, we added Cypress X to Cypress's support file so that it's available to all of our tests. Now we'll add a custom Cypress command to improve the reporting of accessibility issues identified by our tests. So back in our support file, let's go ahead and import another file called command. Now, Cypress actually creates this as a placeholder by default when you install it, and it's intended to be a place where we can extend Cypress's functionality. So Cypress gives us the ability to add commands via its add method. The add method accepts a name for the command that we want to add and a function to invoke when the command is called. So for our command, we want to accept as an argument the path that we want to visit. And then we've included the functionality that we saw in the previous test. First, we visit the page, then we inject ax, and then we call our check ally command. But this time, we're going to pass some additional arguments. So the check ally command accepts a few arguments. The first argument is a selector for the specific part of the DOM that we want to analyze. In our case, we want to analyze the entire document, so we'll just pass in null. The second argument is a configuration object to modify Axe's default behavior. In our case, the Axe defaults are fine, so we'll just pass in null again. Now the third argument is where the magic happens. This is a callback function that Cypress Axe will pass all of the accessibility violations to. Here we've defined a callback function, and in this function, we'll loop through the violations and add some additional logging in Cypress for each violation. The Cypress log function accepts an object with a name property, and here I want to be able to get an idea of the severity of the problem. So if I've learned anything in my career, it's that most problems can be solved with emoji. So I've created this object that maps the severity indicator to a color-coded emoji based on whether the violation is minor, moderate, serious, or critical. The Cypress log object also includes a property for console props, which is what will log to the DevTools console. In this case, I'm passing the entire violations object in case I want to manually inspect it further. Finally, we include a message property. Here, I want to display the help message and link to the URL that contains additional help information. So although you can't pass HTML to the message, I finally figured out through a flurry of internet searches that you can add Markdown. So I've included the Markdown for a link here that links to the help URL. After that, we're looping through each element for this violation and doing some additional logging. So we've got a wrench to indicate that we should fix this node, and we're logging the specific violation in the console and highlighting the specific node in the Cypress logs. So with our custom logging in place, we can update our test to use our new Cypress command. So now if we run our test again, we can see our additional information being logged. So we've got our severity indicator to tell us which issue might be the most severe. And when I hover over the error, it highlights all of the elements causing that violation. And then below that, I can hover over the individual nodes and see those highlighted as well. In addition, we have a helpful description of the error, which links to a help page where we can read more about it in detail. So I find this output to be pretty helpful personally, but the main point is that we have a mechanism to customize how we display information about our accessibility violations. So before we go, I can't just leave all these accessibility errors on the page, so let's go through and fix them. If we go back over to run the test, everything should pass. Yay! Okay, so real quick, let's wrap up with some final thoughts. Whether we're building websites or applications, we should always consider usability. It's important to remember that accessibility is usability. On the web in particular, a big part of usability is meeting your users on their terms. 
Just like we optimize our sites for different devices like desktops, tablets, and mobile phones, we should also optimize for assistive devices like screen readers and ensure that our sites are usable and easy to navigate regardless of how our users interact with them. I hope you find the tools that we talked about useful, but remember that tooling is only a piece of the puzzle. These tools should be used as an enhancement to, not a replacement for, manual usability and accessibility testing. Try navigating through your site using only a keyboard. Try using your site with a screen reader like VoiceOver for Mac. If possible, conduct usability tests with real users who access the web with these technologies. And if you're looking for more help building accessible, responsive websites and applications, I know a few folks that can help you out. Come see what we're up to at csparkbox.com. If you have any questions about any of the things that we talked about, you can find me on the Twitters at HTMElephant, or you can email me at john, with no H, at heysparkbox.com. If you'd like to try out any of the examples we looked at today, you can find the repo along with the instructions to get up and running on GitHub. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching.